Hello and welcome back to Projects in Java. Today we're going to continue our camera project. We're going to be working on the camera frame class. So let's go to our project. And here the camera frame is going to extend JFrame. And it's going to implement Action Listener. And the reason why we're extending Action Listener is for the menu items that we're going to create. Now let's create that J menu. So J menu camera is equal to new J menu. And we'll pass a string called camera. Then we also need a menu bar. Let's call this bar is equal to new J menu bar. And we'll add camera to bar. Now we're going to loop against the cameras that are available. So while list is opened, that means we're able to use the camera. We're going to see if there's another camera after it. And we're going to put that into a list of menu items. So we're going to create a new menu item here. And then we're going to call this camera plus I. We're going to add an action listener. And that's going to be this. Then we're going to release this camera. So list.release. And then list is equal to new video capture. That's going to be i. Then i plus plus. And so this is going to loop through the cameras until we find one that isn't there. The way the cameras are set up is that they start from zero. So however many cameras you have set up, it's going to start from zero and then go up until there are no more cameras. Next, we're going to add the bar to the J frame. So set J menu bar. And we'll pass that bar. And then we'll set up our usual J frame option. So set default close operation. And then we're also going to set a size, so we'll make this 400 by 400. And later we'll change the size based off our camera input. And last we'll set visible to true. And we'll also create a main method. So public static void main string args and this is just going to create a new camera frame. And so let's go ahead and test this. And actually this is supposed to be open. And let's take a look at the rest of the code and make sure we have this set up right. 
And actually here we need to add to the camera menu. So we're going to add cam. So camera.add and then we'll pass a cam. Let's go ahead and launch that again. And here we have our 400 by 400 JFrame with our camera menu. And we have our two camera menu items. So now let's go ahead and create the camera panel class. So new class, let's call this camera panel. And this is going to extend J panel. And then implement runnable and action listener. And the reason why we're implementing Runnable is so that we're able to pull the images. We're going to have a thread that's created in this J panel, and that's going to read the image and then draw it to the screen. And then the action listener will be for our screenshot button. So now that we have that created, let's go back to the camera frame. And then here we're going to create the camera panel. Call it CP. And then here CP is equal to new camera panel. Then we're going to create a thread. We'll just call this thread. It's equal to new thread. And we'll pass that CP. And then before we start the J frame, we'll start the thread. So thread dot start. Now let's go back to camera panel. And the first thing we're going to create in here is a buffered image. Let's call this image. Then we also need a video capture. Let's call this capture. And then a J button for the screenshot. Let's also create a default constructor. And do our imports. Then we'll initialize screenshot. And then add an action listener screenshot, and that's going to be this. And then add screenshot to this panel. And then we'll start on the run method. So first thing we need to do is copy this so that we're able to load the library over here as well. And then capture is going to be equal to a new video capture. And we'll start this off at zero. And then we'll set up the camera frame to be able to change this. Next, we'll need a mat. And this is how we capture the images. And so that's equal to a new mat. And then if capture is opened,
we'll have a while loop, so while true. We're going to read the images, so capture.read webcam underscore image. And so this is going to read the image to the map that we created. And then if webcam underscore image is not empty, we want to convert this into a buffered image. So we're going to create a new method. We're going to call that mat to buffered image. And we're going to pass that webcam underscore image. And then we're going to repaint. And next we'll create the paint method. So public void paint component. And we're going to create a graphics G. Then we'll call super dot paint component. G. And then if this dot image is equal to null, we won't do anything. We'll return. And so if it isn't null, we'll draw the image. So G dot draw image. And we'll pass out the image and then some coordinates. So 10 and 40. This is going to leave space for our menu and our button. And then we'll get the image dot width. And then we'll pass it image dot get height. And we'll change this to null. And so now what the camera panel is doing is once it's started, it loads the OpenCV library, and then it starts reading the images from the camera. And then the paint component will be called and paint the image to the screen. So in the next video, we'll create the matte to buffered image method and finish up the camera panel.